As the music starts, the Health and Human Services, or HHS, and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, logos appear on the screen, then move out of screen. A satellite picture of North America appears with the title Success Stories in Radiation Emergency Preparedness sliding in from the top. An image shows clipboards on a table at the registration station within a radiation training exercise. Then, a radiation exercise roll card is shown for a participant describing the hypothetical locations of contamination that would be found during the scanning process. After completing a population monitoring exercise, our partners were shocked at the amount of planning and resources it required. A picture of emergency responders lined up with titles on their backs. Visible titles include medical officer, decon officer, and fire. It helped them to see why having a coordinated plan for radiation emergencies was so important. The satellite picture of North America reappears and zooms into the outlined area of Texas. Above the outlined area is a map marker and box with the words Texas Department of State Health Services Radiation Emergency Preparedness Across State Regions. The scene shows the first speaker, Chris Moore, emergency planner and investigator for the Texas Department of State Health Services standing in a room and speaking to the camera. Hello, my name is Chris Moore. Together with my colleague, Ray Walker, we bring over 50 years of radiation emergency experience to the Texas Department of State Health Services. An image is shown of the inside of a fire engine as firefighters are responding to a call. Uniforms are clearly visible. 10 years ago, when emergency responders thought about a radiological event, we all assumed the response would be handled by the fire department and hazmat teams at the scene. Two images are shown of Dr. Armin Ansari presenting on radiation topics using slides and tabletop props. That changed after the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, held a meeting about public health's role in setting up community reception centers after a radiation emergency. An aerial image is shown of the inside of a large shelter with multiple rows of occupied teal cots. Afterwards, the scene returns to Chris Moore. I saw that we would be responsible for population monitoring and radiation effects tracking for the public and the environment. The magnitude of that task made us realize we had a gap in our preparedness plans. To bridge that gap, we began to expand our radiation response program and make our colleagues aware of their role in a radiation emergency. The scene shows the second speaker, Ray Walker, operations team leader for the Response and Recovery Unit within the Texas Department of State Health Services. She is standing in a room and speaking to the camera. Since then, we've educated city, county, and state response leaders about the importance of radiation emergency preparedness. A video shows a middle-aged woman stepping up to two MRC volunteers standing outside, wearing gloves and N95 masks. The volunteers are holding survey meters and begin scanning her face and head. While they do this, she looks at them with concern. Then the scene returns to Ray Walker. We help them think through the training, equipment, and volunteers their communities would need to complete response activities. In Texas, our first step was to hold tabletop exercises in cities across the state, in some cases bringing over 200 people together. A video shows the Virtual Community Reception Center, or VCRC, application being used to explore the steps professionals should consider during the initial sorting stage of a community reception center. By simulating the logistical and communication challenges of a population monitoring scenario, we demonstrated to our local partners that radiation emergency planning is critical. That fueled demand for additional preparedness actions in their own communities. We then assisted Harris County, El Paso, and Waco in hosting community reception center exercises. That helped bring together local and regional response partners and gave them an example of how they could manage a radiation emergency. The scene returns to Chris Moore, followed by an animation showing Texas and a number of outlined regions within the state. One of our constant challenges is the size of Texas. Coordinating resources across such a large state is complicated, especially because our public health system is split up into a number of regions. In terms of radiation preparedness, our goal is to help each region identify their capabilities both for themselves and for the regions surrounding them. Next to the outlined regions, a list is shown containing the following items, what they have, what they need, and what they can supply to others. It's important that they know what they have, what they need, and what they can supply to others in an emergency. 
Knowing that allows us to work together to plan how resources and volunteers can be tracked and shared to support radiation emergency response across the state. The scene now shows Ray Walker. Currently, we're making sure all regions and major cities in Texas have a chance to develop and exercise their radiation emergency plans. Response activities depend heavily on having the right people in the right places. One way we hope to build that capacity is by improving how we train and identify Medical Reserve Corps volunteers. An image is shown of a training agenda, listing out a number of topics related to volunteers in a radiation emergency. The scene then returns to Ray Walker. Because we have MRCs with radiation volunteers, one goal is to make sure they receive the training and guidance needed. And CDC material has helped tremendously with that. In addition to our State Radiation Incident Annex, we want to publish more radiation plans and procedures for our State Medical Operations Center and Regional Medical Operations Centers, similar to what we've already developed for floods, fires, and hurricanes. Having those plans in place will help us formalize the role of public health in a radiation emergency and maintain these partnerships over time. The CDC has been a part of this journey from the beginning. We have good relationships with Dr. Armin Ansari and other subject matter experts at CDC who have attended some of our trainings and provided guidance when needed. A video shows Dr. Armin Ansari, health physicist at CDC, on stage presenting on radiation topics. He has a cart full of props and survey meters next to him. After a few seconds, a chalkboard animation moves onto the right side of the screen with the words, Radiation Basics Program Segments 1. Sources of Radiation then, an image of CDC's Radiation Emergencies homepage is shown with Get Inside, Stay Inside, Stay Tuned content displayed. We are continually promoting radiation training and exercise with our local partners, and some of the best resources we've provided are taken from the CDC website. Then, the CDC website for Population Monitoring and Community Reception Center resources is shown. There are exercise materials for community reception centers, population monitoring guide, and sheltering guide were some of the first clearly written radiation preparedness resources that we could use and share. Hosting a community reception center can be stressful, so it's helpful to be able to tell our partners where they can print out resources such as scenarios, contamination cards, and guidance, and adapt them to meet their needs. The scene now shows Chris Moore. We can't just sit back and expect radiation preparedness to take care of itself. It requires a strong, prepared team. The image of Texas public health regions is shown again, and across the state, a number of people icons appear. Color radiates from these icons and joins together to symbolize the impact of local team members across their communities. Often, that means finding partners who are passionate about radiation safety and are willing to put time in beyond what their full-time job requires. They become our local champions, and they help us as trainers, spokespersons, and leaders who make radiation preparedness possible in their communities. I'm proud to see how much progress we've made. When our partners finish a tabletop exercise, they see how important this work is. For us, it's a constant reminder that what we do makes an impact, and it all adds up to make Texas even more prepared for a radiation emergency. The screen flashes white and is then replaced with a blue screen with white dots on the bottom and the message, for more information on radiation, visit www.cdc.gov forward slash NCEH forward slash radiation forward slash emergencies forward slash or call 1-800-CDC-INFO. Below that are the Health and Human Services, or HHS, and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, logos. Then the website and phone number disappear, but the logos remain. Above the logos now appears the message, the mention or use of any healthcare products or providers does not constitute or imply endorsement by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention.